Today I will be sharing quite a few things that I wish I knew before playing Hardcore Classic WoW. I am doing this in the hopes that you guys can learn from my mistakes and that my experience playing hundreds of hours of Hardcore Classic WoW can actually help you out. Some of these tips and tricks might sound obvious and some you might never even have heard about and I'm just hoping that there's something helpful in this video for everyone that will help you guys stay alive. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Now, if you know me, one of my favorite items in Classic WoW is the One Ring, an item inspired by the Lord of the Rings. Now, it took Sam and Frodo the whole trilogy to bring peace and safety to Middle-earth, but you can bring back the control to your PC in a matter of a few clicks. With Opera GX, you can limit the CPU and the RAM that you let your browser use in order to enhance the performance of your PC, when gaming with your browser open and get rid of lag. This is incredibly easy to use and will make for a much smoother gaming session. Opera GX offers you endless customization, but it can be overwhelming. Now with GX mods you can flip your entire browser 180 with just one click and change pretty much anything you want. With Opera GX you can easily change your wallpaper and theme colors. You can activate background music and control it easily from the sidebar. Browser sounds will be displayed when opening and closing tabs, providing some extra quality of life, which can be turned off or on based on personal preference, and keyboard sounds will play whenever you type something in this browser, like in the search bar for example, which can also be turned off or on based on personal preference. Now we all know switching browsers can be a pain, but with Opera GX you can go from zero to hero in a matter of seconds, as Opera GX is equipped with an important tool that allows you to quickly import all of your settings from your previous browser to a GX, including browser history, bookmarks, and cookies. In addition, Opera GX is also compatible with every Google Chrome extension. Now make sure to take your browser game to the next level and check out Opera GX by clicking the link in the video description or the pinned comment. Number 1. Don't go into caves. This sounds incredibly obvious and it's what everyone tells you, but I can promise you, Several times throughout your leveling journey, you will get a quest inside a cave and you will say to yourself, surely it will be fine this time, right? And you know what? You might be right, you might, be su you might survive, nothing scary happens, and because of that you will get another quest later down the line, in a new cave, and you will say, well, I survived last time, let's do it again, and sooner or later this will bite you in the ass. Caves are death traps for two major reasons. Number one, there is only, like, well, usually, there is only one way out, and if mobs spawn towards the entrance, that's not really a viable escape option either, meaning you are trapped. On top of that, if you are in a cave at launch with a lot of other people killing mobs in that cave, you will end up triggering what is called a, a dynamic hyperspawn, where mobs will start spawning even faster than usual, and they might even spawn in chunks of several mobs spawning at the same time in the same place. At which, at which point a mob or two can spawn directly on top of you, right after they have been killed, and it's super unpredictable. Number 2. Learn Split Pulling Split Pulling is a mechanic that allows you to split the leash of enemies, and the best way to think about this is that enemies close to each other will have separate leash timers, but if you pull them with an ability at the same time, you can take advantage of this separate leash timer to reset the mobs or reset some of them while keeping one leash. This can be useful on mobs like Princess for example in Elvin Forest, where you can pull with an explosive, then you can reset all the ants and then you can pull the kill Princess, or even the Forsaken Courier in the Hinterlands, where you can reset the ads around the courier and then kill the courier itself. I wish I had learned this mechanic before my first run as I had to skip certain quests that now, looking back at it, would have been very easy to complete with this mechanic. Just make sure you got some rockets or explosives in your bags ready for use. Number 3. Download the unit scan add-on for dangerous enemies. I have talked about this add-on before in great length, so I will keep it short for this video, but it's an add-on that will display a visual warning on your screen, and also a warning sound whenever a dangerous mob appears nearby you. The only thing about this is that you manually need to put in which mobs the add-on will react to, and actually search for. Next up, which quests are dangerous, and which ones are easier. 
A lot of quests in the open world will be somewhat difficult to complete, many of them without even giving you an indicator of them being difficult. Thankfully, group quests that are meant to be done in a group will be marked as group quests, but there are many quests that are disguised as regular quests that might end up killing you on hardcore servers. Just to name a couple, there's a quest in Sontalon, in a mine to the east where there's a goblin quest to protect him, in which he spawns insane amounts of ads. The missing diplomat quest will flag you for PvP, the null quest or the nulls to the east in Red Ridge, they will have an insane amount of shadow resistance, so being a warlock or a shadow priest sucks absolute balls over there. In Silver Pine you have a horde quest, or several of them actually, that cross the pathing of Sons of Aragal, aka elite mobs. You also have the Bloodsail boats in Stranglethorn Vale, which is meant for level 45 players, but I can promise you right now that you do not want to go there at level 45, especially if you're playing solo. And you also obviously have the infamous Pawn Captures Queen quest in Ungoro. What I will say here is that grabbing a leveling guide like Rested XP, you know exactly which quest to skip and which ones to do, because they have already made a leveling guide for you, which skips the difficult quests, and then you can check out Rested XP through the link in the video description, and even use my discount code aka Solheim to get a discount. Next up, be careful when accepting party invites due to layering. I have seen players die to accepting party invites from a player on a different layer, then being spawned in on top of either several mobs or one very dangerous mobs. I have seen people accept a party invite then suddenly spawn right where Stitches was on the road in Duskwood, or even people accepting party invites in Blasted Lands and landing right on top of Terramers. But you can also accept a party invite inside an empty cave with no mobs, and then get layered into a different instance of that cave where all the mobs are suddenly alive and now you are dead. So the moral of the story is that whenever you are about to accept a party invite by anyone, make sure you are in a somewhat safe area. Next up, don't keybind the demonic rune, and if you do, make sure to have it on a keybind far away so you won't fat finger it instead of a bandage or a health potion. If you are on a bridge, don't jump, sounds stupid, but I've seen people fall off. Use water to your advantage. Lots of mobs, specifically mostly beasts, cannot swim in the water. It is worth testing this in different locations before completely relying on it, but fighting near water can save your life on many occasions, so as long as there is water nearby, I would recommend fighting near the water. Also, green quests still gives the same experience reward as yellow or red quests, so don't feel like you need to throw away a quest just because it's green. Actually, some classes benefit greatly from doing green quests, because they will be a lot easier to actually complete. Now this one, especially, will be, well, especially relevant at the launch itself, but possibly for quite some time depending on how long the hype phase lasts, and how often people restart their character. Don't be too greedy with tags. Speaking from personal experience and also my friend's experience, a lot of deaths occur due to you being too greedy, either pulling too many mobs at the same time just because you want to get the tag before someone else, or pulling the next mob while you're still low on health or low on mana from just having been in combat, once again to try to secure a mob tag. Skip the mob tagging competition and play it slow and steady instead and you will have a higher chance of making it all the way to level 60. Now at the end I also just want to give some quick fire additional tips worth thinking about. Number 1, don't get too overconfident. You might have been able to pull 2 or 3 mobs at a time for quite some time, but if you get overconfident you will eventually find yourself in huge danger. Number 2, don't take unnecessary risks if you take a 1% risk of dying every hour. You will be dead way before getting to level 60. If your gut is telling you not to do it, just don't do it. And the last and the most important tip, don't let your health, or I guess your health bar, go below 1%. And that's a bunch of tips and tricks that I learned throughout my leveling journey on Hardcore after losing one character at level 54, and then making it to level 60 on my next character, and playing close to 500 hours of Hardcore in total. I probably learned a bunch of other things as well, but these were the important notes that I could think about while writing this script. If you have any additional things to share to help your fellow WoW gamers, please let us know in the comments down below. 
that's pretty much what I have for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.